I can't say that anybody that was within their right mind would even want to be president. Everything in that job is difficult. I, I'm surprised and grateful when people want to do it. I mean, that only goes so far, but I think that it's probably one of the most thankless jobs there is. I think the most difficult decision is where to spend their time, quite honestly. Um, I think it comes down to where, what gets their time and what gets their attention. There are so many priorities and so many issues and so many different uh, interested parties coming at them all the time. I think that's what it really comes down to. I think probably the biggest challenge is dealing with our two political parties being so split and just not supporting each other regardless of how they really feel, even if they're on the same page. You have someone who doesn't have much to do with what goes on in specific states. And, and for example, I'm just gonna use like the Black Lives Matter. A lot of people expect the president to say something and do things for stuff that he really has no control over. And so the president has to deal with all these unfavorable opinions toward him for things that he can't even, you know, he, he has no influence over. Again, it's just, you know, wanting to do, wanting to make, wanting to change things, and they really can't. It's, it's you know, they're, they're, they're kind of, their arms are kind of tied. And so they really, the president has to be really selective on what they want to change. They face a divided country. Um, just because they're elected anymore, I don't think it's a referendum on um, what their platform was. It's partially, but you look at our country right now, we're about 40, 40 and 10. 40 on one side, 40 on the other, and 10 kind of in the middle. In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. NAFTA will tear down trade barriers between our three nations. It will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country by 1995 alone. They want to make a difference. They want to make a change, something that's you know, uh, positive for the country. But no matter what they do, they're going to upset probably around 40%, if not more, of the country. So it's almost impossible to make a difference without part of the country hating you. That's the way our system is set up, and that's you know, the way people believe. So, you know, in good, you're gonna have, good times, you're going to have your detractors. In, in bad times, you'll uh, also have supporters to balance you out as well. So I, I think it's sort of a unique uh, dichotomy we're in with that. If the president has to drive a policy or a policy-driven decision, it has to be weighed against, well, who amongst the people are not going to be happy with the outcome? because you're not going to please everyone. So it's people versus policy, which is really, really hard, because at some point you'll have to make a decision because it's the people of this country. They're the ones that voted you in, or a portion of them voted you in. Thus, the policies have to reflect them. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts. The most difficult decision a president ever has to make is a decision that will directly impact the lives or deaths of American citizens. And that's sending troops into a conflict. It's declaring war. 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 Some sort of a military action. Are there going to be civilian casualties? War. With any war, thousands of people are going to die. Thousands of people's sons and husbands and uncles and brothers are going to die. So to me, that's the worst thing you can do, knowing that you're going to be sending people to their death. I think those are decisions that, you know, sometimes are made where you're risking, you know, sacrificing lives, but in the long term, it might pan out for future generations. And to me, th those are the most difficult. The toughest decisions are taking these extraordinary complex issues. They're so complex. People want to look at the Middle East and, oh, it's so simple. Let's just bomb things and we'll be done, or let's just do this, or let's leave them alone, or let's send troops in. It, nothing is that simple. That is one of the toughest decisions they have to make, whether they have to get involved or they don't have to get involved because they have the largest army, one of the largest armies in the world, they have a lot of supplies, they have, they have a lot of allies in the world. So I think that's a really tough decision, I would think, when it comes to war. 
a singular decision is at what point do you have to figure out there's going to be a major confrontation with a longtime enemy. Uh, you, I, I read an article recently that said that uh, Chinese citizens, I think something like two thirds of them, think that uh, the major war with the U.S. is inevitable and they don't think that they're going to necessarily win. And so I think that do we have to take advantage of that at some point or can we hold them at bay forever? And I don't think the latter is going to happen. So at what point do we say we have to prevent a situation like this from getting to a point where we can't control it anymore? A lot of the prioritization decisions that are made probably have just as big of a direct impact on people's lives as those sort of military decisions. So policy around even food drug administration type of work. But you know, actually what I'd say is probably the, the, the most important decisions they have to make is who they choose on their cabinet, who their advisors are. But I think the most difficult decisions I think the president has upcoming right now are really trying to make those decisions that also put American citizens' lives at stakes when it comes to our healthcare system. Um, and whatever it may be, um, people need healthcare and people are literally dying because of lack of health care services and they need to figure that out because it's been something that's been uh, spiraling out of control with or without Ob Obamacare. Um, you know and and uh, I think just the other day they were talking about that they're letting in a hundred thousand Syrian refugees um, into the country looking with what Europe had to deal is dealing with has been you know especially Italy um, Greece I think it's a very small number, um, you know, however, you know, and then you could argue it, you know, is, is this an, a problem for America? Well, I mean, if you still consider America as a melting pot, yes, it actually is a, it's an international problem because, you know, it is an international war. President has a, their, you know, he, she has their work cut out for them, for sure. That's a tough one. I think probably how to handle international issues. Um, we want to be there to help, but so often when we go in to help, um, we're criticized when we do, or it doesn't go well, and then it backfires. But if we don't go in to help, then we're criticized as well. I think the most difficult decisions the president will have to deal with, he doesn't see coming. I think we look at the situations such as uh, with Obama. We could look at what happened in Libya. We could look at um, what he walked into, which perhaps was foreseen, but uh, with the economy. You look at Bush and we could say 9-11. We look back at Jimmy Carter with uh, the hostages. A lot of the most difficult situations are externally driven, not necessarily internally driven, and so um, they can't always be, you know, easily addressed and glossed over. I think at home, some of the most difficult decisions just simply relate around something as fundamental as the economy and how you can bring together two very separated parties to try to accomplish anything. <laughs>